I want first of all to thank the members of the press for attending this press briefing which comes at the conclusion of the 65th meeting of the OECS authority, the meeting of the heads of government of the OECS. We have here at the press briefing the immediate past chairman of the OECS authority, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chastanay. We have the Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, Prime Minister Timothy Harris, and the Director General of the OECS, Dr. Dilikos Jules. My name is Ralph Gonzalez of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm the current chair of the OECS. The, at the meeting, all full members of the OECS were representative, were represented, the, including Montserrat, and we had an associate member in the president of the Martinican Council. He was there at the meeting also. A special guest for this authority meeting, as you are aware, is the distinguished Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley. You heard her at the opening, but we had a very productive caucus last evening where the Director General presented a wide range of areas of cooperation. And it was agreed upon that the that the Prime Minister of Barbados, well, she agreed and we, we concurred in this agreement that she would immediately examine the question of ease of travel for OECS nationals passing through Barbados, for example, to use the picture ID, which we can use throughout our own OECS territories to travel that you're passing through Barbados, you can use that also while you're transiting. Um, then the question of making the transiting more accommodating, and there are a number of practical suggestions in, in um, that regard. Cooperation on the matter regarding to Sargassum, and a range of other matters which we have put down for discussion, practical matters of cooperation, touching on deepening integration between Barbados and the OECS countries. Very important outcome in that discussion was that a special meeting would be held of the heads of government of the OECS and Barbados on Liat with the aim of understanding better where we are with Liat you know there is a an analysis which is ongoing there are consultants on the project and we'll have the consultants there and the and Caribbean Development Bank which is very much involved in this exercise and the management of Liat and we are hoping that out of that discussion would emerge a new shareholders agreement, hopefully, with other members of the OECS, other than Antigua and Barbuda, Dominican, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Others can join with us and Barbados in a new shareholder agreement in strengthening the way forward for, for Liat. So that's a, that's a very important conclusion which we also arrive at. The meeting itself, we, 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 had, we had a very thorough work program, which included a, a, a caucus this morning and full plenary discussions this afternoon. In, in, the, in the caucus this morning, we addressed the 
matter of the appointment of the an ambassador to Brussels, as you are aware at the moment, the three saints plus Dominica are the countries which are represented through our Brussels mission. And uh, there's the occasion for the appointment of someone and we are we're nearing the end of that process. And then the government of Antigua and Barbuda has agreed to become part of that arrangement. So the only country which would be standing alone, so to speak, in Brussels would be the government of Grenada. Historically, since the days of the, 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 the People's Revolutionary Government, they have had a representative in Brussels, and, and, and we understand that historical phenomenon. So, so this is strengthening the question of representation overseas. It was also agreed that we would make an, uh, uh, an organized demarche towards representation in Africa. We don't have to spell out to our region the importance of this. It's long overdue. And the idea is that we would have an ambassador from each of the countries in the OECS where we have missions in the United Kingdom that we'd have non-permanent, non-resident ambassadors to several countries in Africa. One, for instance, to Ethiopia and the African Union, which is headquarters in Addis Ababa. One for Nigeria, um, one for the southern, for, for South Africa, one for Egypt, Algeria, and also we are working with the government of the Kingdom of Morocco to establish a permanent a resident mission for the OECS countries in Morocco. As you know, we, we have been doing a lot of work with this North African country, which is both Arab and African. And we, we, we have selected these countries very carefully to, to represent the broadest range of interests um, in Africa. We, we had a discussion, a very interesting discussion, on the, uh, the implications of some recent changes in the United States of America's foreign policy, the impact, the implications for, for, for our OECS economic union. We got an update on the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, a very detailed discussion and the ways in which we can strengthen this in preparation for the audit which is going to take place of ECA in February next year by the, the International Civil Aviation Organization. But that audit will involve security issues that's dealt with otherwise. The there was a presentation by the government of St. Kitts and Nevis on security. And among other things, the paper which was presented, we are going to circulate this to Barbados, which is the other member country of the regional security system. And the, 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 the meeting which would take place in another few weeks' time, that would get a central place for discussion at the RSS. We got a presentation from the Caribbean Court of Justice of the APEX, APEX system. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to have a discussion on the, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court um, budget. We are hoping to do that in the next couple of weeks because the Honorable Chief Justice was unavoidably absent because she had a prior engagement, an important matter which she had to deal with. I've been advised in Canada, and we are accommodating her at a very special um, occasion sometime over the next two or three weeks, and, and we are working out the specific date. Then we adopted the OECS work program and budget for the year. Um, as you are aware, or ought to be aware, that 
the OECS Commission. Each country has commissioners and, and uh, the, the Secretary General, the Director General is, is at the core of the Commission. And through the Budget Committee, we have had the work plan, the work program approved, the budget, and it's a matter, well, recommended really, and it had to come to us for final approval, which we did. Very important discussion on deepening the integration movement in terms of the economic union. And in that regard, we, there was a discussion. It started at the opening on, on issues in CARICOM. We know that the, the, the Golden Commission in Jamaica had presented a report. I myself had appeared before that commission. And uh, after the commission had presented its report, uh, you're also aware that I presented a, a detailed paper on the question which paper was circulating and, and which no doubt would form part of the wider discussion which would take place at the CARICOM heads of government in July in Montego Bay. We look at the issue as to how can we have carved out within the revised Treaty of Shagaramos a special place for the OECS territory so that we can move, recognize that we are moving at a faster pace in the integration process. The, uh, Dr. Antoine reported also on the Article 164 of the Revised Treaty of, of, of Shagaramas, where there are certain protections offered to certain commodities for the OECS. And um, in Guyana, at the Council for Trade and Economic Development, there was a decision for a continuation of the Article 164 protections for another 10 years, um, subject to the, the no objection from Haiti, which I don't see a problem with, and, and Montserrat. These are, are legal requisites. And, and we want to commend all those who have been involved in this particular exercise, because this is an important bread and butter question for our flour or bear or animal feed and, and a host of other commodities which we which we export. And and then Commissioner Murdoch gave us a very good summary, and we took a lot of this decisions in relation to the free circulation of goods within the our economic union. The, then the OECS had taken a decision for the re-establishment of the diplomatic mission in Canada, and we got an update on that as how we are proceeding. Similarly, for the regularization of the status of the Eastern, the Eastern Caribbean Liaison Service, which, which relates to the farm working program and the government of St. Lucia, is, is, is assisting very much in that regard, and we want to thank Alan. There was a report on the accession of St. Martin's to the OECS. You know, they had a, a terrible, we, we were having a discussion, it was on stream for associate membership, but then they have, they have their hurricane and all the rest. So before we even finalize all that with them, we will accord them observer status. They can come see how we are, are proceeding and, and and trying to strengthen our links with the non-independent countries, as indeed we have done with, 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 with um, Martinique and, of course, Ang Anguilla and, and the British Virgin Islands. And in that light, we got an update, too, on the accession of Guadeloupe, and that is proceeding apace. The chief executive officer of LIAT came and presented it to us the Carib Sky Initiative, the coordination of routes between three airlines, um, Liat, Winair, and Air Antilles. They have between them 25 aircraft. Um, they visit 30 odd countries. Um, and, and we're just trying to streamline our air transport system to make things better for. for for all of us who are traveling. We know the difficulties in traveling in the region. 
Um, we received reports from the Council of Ministers relating to agriculture, environment, education, health, and foreign affairs, and uh, there's a declaration on the support for resilience in the OECS. And uh, a short while ago, I signed the, the, the terms of reference for the Audit Committee, a very important pillar in the organizational apparatus of the OECS. I would say that that is a broad summary. I, I don't really want to take up a lot of time in doing more than what I've done in, in this regard. It's a very successful meeting. Our next meeting is going to be on the 25th and 26th of October in St. Vincent and Grenadines. It should be on the eve of our independence anniversary on the 27th. And I'm sure they would love to stay overnight and, and be with us at the parade ground. On, on, on the 27th, and, and we, show, we all show our solidarity to, to one another, and I, I believe that would be a prelude to us coming across in February to be with Alan for St. Lucia's 40th anniversary. So it's, 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 it's all, we're moving along pretty well. Um, I'm sure that there are the members here who can add, but perhaps the better, the better thing we do is, is to hear the, the questions and um, and, and get the and give answers as, as as best as we can. Thank you very much. My other colleagues would like to say something while your colleagues are a little slow off the mark. May I ask them a question? Why are you taking so long? <laughs> I bet you the first person who is going to ask a question is a, is a female journalist. Is that what we have? Huh? You're not sure yet. Let's, let's, um, the, they're advancing, the women are rightly advancing in, 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 in every field. Seem as though saving except in, in, in politics. And we, we need more women to come forward. Yes? Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to um, very much thank um, Prime Minister Gonzalez for his well-experienced stewardship. Um, I, I think that was a, a very productive session that we had here. Um, I, I also want to thank um, the Prime Minister, um, Mia Motley, um, for taking time out. We all know um, how busy her schedule has been, and I think that we should read into it what we're supposed to read into it, in that she's recognized and Barbados has recognized the importance of having a closer relationship with us at the OECS. And I want to say that that's a feeling that's very neutral. So this is not a, a one-sided approach. I think that Prime Minister Motley is no stranger to all of the heads. Um, and, and clearly, we, we recognize the work that she has done in CARICOM, wearing multiple of different hats. Um, so I, I think that the timing of that meeting also was important. Um, as we are about to go to another significant meeting um, in the beginning of July, which is going to be the, the CARICOM meeting. Uh, and clearly, that meeting is uh, the, being paved because of, the, of the, the document that was written by um, Bruce Golding, uh, which has been well circulated. And I know that uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez has spoken on many of our behalf, on, our, on behalf of many of us, um, in articulating. Uh, a lot of issues that, that, that have been brought up. And, and clearly, the OECS um, is going to be going to that meeting with a very clear strategy of, of, of strengthening our own position. Um, because CSME has been successful in many years and, and not so successful in others. Um, and uh, if I was to, to say boldly that I feel that the OECS as an organization um, has been, from a solution perspective, 
much more successful and much more of a meaningful organization for us. Um, and therefore, I think the CARICOM has some things to learn from what we're doing here at OECS. I think what we did after, before and after the hurricanes, um, and clearly some of the other negotiations that we've been involved in, um, the OECS has really stood uh, head and shoulders above other regional organizations. I'm, I'm leaving this meeting comforted in the fact that that is in the shared opinion by my other colleague heads and that there is a renewed commitment um, to this organization. I think it's also important to point out the, the OMAN's work that the Director General himself and his staff have been, been doing. Um, uh, they have certainly kept a pace, um, despite the fact that we have not had many meetings, but they have not allowed that to be a distraction. Um, and the Director has stayed in touch with not only me when I was Chairman, but with many of the other members and stayed focused on the job at hand. So I want to say that um, uh, I'm very, very pleased with the new direction. Uh, I think that we are leaving this meeting with renewed hope in, in several fronts. And one of them is clearly LIAT. Um, we've agreed um, that we're going to be having a follow-up meeting, I believe, in Barbados um, to be announced very soon, in which um, we're going to be looking at whether we can broaden the shareholder base of LIAT. Um, we have seen some substantial improvements in LIAT, but clearly there are some of us that still want to see some other structural changes at LIAT. So in terms of the governance of LIAT, particularly the appointment of the board, the independence of the board, um, the ability to make independent commercial decisions that may not necessarily be the ones that some states want to 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 see, but we've got to be able to get to a structure um, that's successful and therefore a mechanism of uh, to support the routes um, that aren't as profitable. So it's not to say it's not to fly those routes, but let us clearly understand what those costs are um, and who is going to pay those additional costs because continue to ask LIAT to uh, react to all of our needs without taking into consideration what the cost is and who is going to pay for that is very unfair um, to the, 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 the shareholders. So I, I, I myself am looking forward to that meeting um, because aviation is critical to the continued development um, of our region. In the area of trade, um, I think that the, the idea of improving the trade amongst the OECS, but also trying to strengthen our position within CARICOM um, was something that was tackled very seriously at the meeting here today. Um, and I think it, the timing is, is, is very um, opportune for us. Um, we need to be able to grow our economies. Um, and there's no point in being part of a, a CSME if, in fact, it's in name only. And it's not resounding to the economic benefit of the citizens of our country. So I, I think that we're certainly anxious and prepared for the meeting that's going to be taking place in, in, in July. And I can say to you that I'm leaving here strengthened and optimistic about the, the future of the OECS. And more importantly, that I am looking forward to the meeting in July. And it's certainly not the intention of any of the heads to allow any of the issues to be put underneath the carpet. These things have to be thoroughly discussed. and We have to determine how we're proceeding. But I think that we're strengthened knowing that should anything happen to CARICOM um, or changes take place in CARICOM, that we here in the OECS have a very a strong regional organization to fall back on. So um, I, I just want to again thank um, the incoming chairman and also to, to thank the, the director general and his staff for the support they've given me over the last year. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to the uh, agenda that we've established for ourselves. And one of the meaningful things, I think, is, is that the commitment among heads to meet on a more regular basis um, so that our support um, and, uh, and recognition of the, of the importance of OECS has to be manifested in our actions. And, and I, I, I got a very a strong sense there's a commitment by all the heads um, to make that happen. Thank you very much, Alan. Question? What the question's about. 
You know, actually, one of the things we spoke about, um, and in addition to what I said and what Alan has said, you know, we have this form which we fill out, called an ED form. Now, all of us know some, they're so long. And, 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 and you, they repeat all these questions, the pain in the neck, many cases. And, and really the case for this form is becoming is really less and less important. We have a computer system, people bring your passport. It has become. Has become. <laughs> well, you know, I always, I always have to be very careful when I talk, Alan, because we have, we have some immigration officers across this, and chief immigration officers who, who, are, who are lords and ladies unto themselves. So I have to be very careful how I speak um, in public sometimes. But you bring your passport or you show your ID card or whatever it is, and they check you, they, they make an a, a entry as to you there. If the, tourism, if the tourism department wants to know which tourists come from where and so forth, you can get the information otherwise. And in any events, we, we have an advanced passenger information system. When somebody, when they, under the law, and we just strengthened the law, we passed it in St. Vincent, I don't know if you pass it yet. You're just about to pass it. The the advanced passenger information system, you live in St. Lucia, come into St. Vincent. By the time you board it, we know who the passengers who are coming in. And we know whether there are any bad boys and girls so whom we must look out for and so on and so forth. So this long piece of paper which you have to be filling out. And, and sometimes I see some old men and old women struggling. I mean, I, I am, I'm almost at that point where I'm struggling now too with, with, with these things. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, I, I would like if we could get rid of this thing. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm, we are serious about things, things like these. I must say there are some things which we have spoken about which we can't talk all about for reasons of tactics and strategy because the, we have been taught both by the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament that the leaders don't talk everything. They can't talk every single thing. We have to know when to talk and what to talk. But we, we had a very good meeting and um, seeking to improve people's lives. And as you can see from the subjects which we, which we touched, uh, I, I, th I think um, Timothy wants to say something. Thank you, Chair. Let me begin by commending the government and people of St. Lucia for being an incredible, excellent host in the context of this, the 65th meeting of the authority. And, of course, to commend equally the OECS Commission for its work in preparing the documentation Clearly, we could say that this meeting has been well organized and well put together. The addition, if you will, of Mia Mutley, I think, was an important one. I should say the Honorable Prime Minister of Barbados, Ms. Mutley, was an important one in the context of the lead role which Barbados plays in the context of our CSME engagement and that particular matter had, for a long period of time, been given leadership support, Owen Arthur, his successor, Stuart, and now Mia. As we look at what is to happen at CARICOM, as we look at the, the golden document, it was important that we, among the small states which have their own peculiarities, indeed, all countries within CARICOM, one could say, um, small by the way of the population, but we in the OECS and Barbados represent the smallest of the small. And in that context, I think it was refreshing to find in the Prime Minister of Barbados a new partner, new partner in the context of the CSME agenda, which Barbados would provide leadership to. And we reminisce 
of the good old days of Avinata, when I think he somewhat also inspired a lot of us in terms of his leadership of that particular agenda within the CARICOM context. So we hope to see better deepening and perhaps um, widening of the functional cooperation with Barbados. And we look to see that an, a plethora of issues that are there before us, that we could find some harmonized framework between Barbados and the OECS um, um, countries. So that to me, if I were to attach to one single element that was different and which augurs well in terms of translation into tangible benefits, I would say that meeting was helpful in that context. And the place we had always wanted Barbados to be and the hope that it should have offered, we are well aware of the Maiwi case and long before that and subsequent to that, the difficult challenge that many ordinary people felt that somewhere Barbados was not as open and as engaged in terms of issues to do with free movement and the associated matter of contingency rights. You know, and so we believe a new order will come in that regard. I think we were able to discuss a number of difficult foreign affairs, matters of international relations, how we will work together as a single unit to deal with the evolution of foreign policy challenges from our partners, strategic partners, the USA, North America, and elsewhere as they evolve, how we will um, deal with issues with our special friends like Venezuela. I believe that those conversations are conversations that we have to, from time to time, at the level of heads, engage one another so that there will be better coherence of policy and messaging and these critical matters. Overall, I would say that we, the St. Kitts and Nevis delegation, is highly satisfied that this has been a useful engagement, and I would want to commend all those who prepared the papers which we had to peruse and to discuss, all those who made arrangements with respect to other aspects of our comfort, security, and hospitality. And again, to say thanks to the good people of St. Lucia who carried the torch and the candle with respect to this meeting very well. And final note of commendation, that perhaps from this meeting, we could really believe that there is a redemption song for us as a region, working together and doing great things that would redound to the benefit of the, the people. And the first night I was touched, and I'm going to end on that one, um, touched with some of the presentations that we had, in particular, the show of entrepreneurship coming from young people taking up new and difficult challenges, such as that to do with environment, health, and conservation, vis-a-vis -vis the new worry of sargasm and the potential devastation of our tourism product. Um, you know, to me, that was an eye-opener. That is more of what we would want to happen throughout the region, to see young people rise to the challenge and being given the support of governments, of private sector, of the rest of the society, so that they could well achieve their fullest potential, redounding to an upliftment of the Caribbean civilization. From the perspective of the OECS Commission, I want to pick, off, pick up on where Prime Minister Harris left off, because for me, first, one of the highlights of the meeting of the heads, well, there were several highlights, at least four of them, but one of the significant ones was the involvement of one of our 30 under 30 youth entrepreneurs in the briefing of the heads on the Sargassum issue. The government of Grenada had made a request of the commission to take a lead in shaping a regional solution to the problem of Sargassum, and we were very proudly able to present a young entrepreneur from St. Lucia, Johannes Dujon, who has found a way to turn 
a problem into a solution and a potential industry. And I'm um, feeling extremely, we, I think we should all feel extremely proud that heads of government could so readily embrace a young under 20, under 30 entrepreneur and give him the fullest support and look at ways in which government and the youth can work together to create different solutions to major problems that we face. Um, I want to again go on record to thank Prime Minister Shastny for the very energetic role that he has played in as former chairman in his tenure as chairman of the OECS and the very aggressive advocacy that he led on the international stage. We expect that a lot of that will continue because he's also the lead head for climate change and environment at the CARICOM level and continues to push the advocacy front. Prime Minister Gonzalez, as we all know, is an, an old warrior and um, a very strong academic. So I think he brings to the chairmanship of the commission at a very critical time when we have to think very strategically about the issues confronting us, that quality of leadership that comes from years of experience and political savvy. Um, I must say that this meeting, I think, also marked a watershed in the conviviality and the solidarity among OECS heads. Um, not all of the discussions were comfortable discussions, but they were very cordial, they were very, very frank, and I think that is a very positive sign because too often in our region, issues are never confronted head on. And at this meeting in particular, the heads were able to discuss any points of difference, and at the end of the day, arrive at um, some convergence of positions on those issues. Uh, the presence of Prime Minister Mia Motley, as indicated earlier, was a high point for us because she too, um, I think, has brought to the CARICOM stage a new level of energy and commitment, um, a level of commitment and clarity that is going to be very helpful in pushing the entire regional integration agenda forward. And certainly, I would think it's fair to say that she exceeded expectations because we did make a presentation to her on areas of collaboration between Barbados and the OECS. And her response to that exceeded expectations because she too had come with her own ideas far beyond some of what we were proposing on the solutions. And I think it is only prudent that we see the results and the results will speak for themselves. Um, Lastly, the final high point for us at the Commission was the presentations made on the, the Caribbean Climate Smart Accelerator, which, as you know, is the, co the coalition pulled together by um, people like industry leaders like Sir Richard Branson, um, Bill Gates, etc., um, and spearheaded by Prime Ministers uh, Keith Mitchell and... and um, Prime Minister Alan Chastney. And um, Barbados has indicated an interest in coming on board. Uh, there were some very concrete, low hanging fruit that looks very possible for us to implement with support from those private sector interests. And we expect that to be a useful fast track mechanism to solving a lot of the problems of vulnerability that we face in the Caribbean and the OECS in particular. Questions? The, we, we received a report <coughs> from the health, um, the health ministers. Different countries are looking at the national health insurance system. Um, but clearly, there is the, 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 a good situation would be if we can all, whatever systems we devise, or if, if all those systems are devised, we do them in a way that we can have a regional approach. Because clearly, the more people you have, 
the greater the risks could be spread and therefore the smaller the premium. I mean, it is a, it is an elementary principle. And, and that is something. It's not, an, it's, it's not a very easy thing. But whoever asked the question, they, they, they're very cognizant of the importance of, 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 of health, and especially our people are living longer. They, over the last 10, 15 years, the group 60 years and over increased close to one third. The growth is about one third. And though the youth segment of the population remains still the largest single segment of the population, proportionately the over 60s are growing um, at a faster pace. Now that, that has all kind of implications for health, for uh, social security, for participation rates, um, in, in the labor force and, and so on and so forth. Um, but we in the OECS, we have done quite well with primary health care. We have done very well with water. A lot of people don't take that as a health issue. Good, consistent, quality water supply, or pretty much universal, um, into the homes of people at a fairly low price. A lot of people take that for granted. Immunization of children under the age of five, almost 100%. We have good primary health care systems, good public health care systems, and we, we collect our garbage um, every week and we dispose them mile and wide. We do it. So uh, these are things which, again, many of our people take for granted. Um, you don't have the percentage of persons using pit toilets, for instance, have fallen immensely, and, and water closets are the one which are almost universal now. All these things are very important. Um, we have a good primary health care system, good secondary health care system, tertiary health care. There are gaps. That's why many of us have to go to other countries, but more and more. We are seeing in the region efforts being made to collaborate, for instance, in the area of oncology. Antigua has developed as a center of for dealing with, 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 with cancer. In the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have, the OECS has recognized that we are a center of excellence for critical pediatric care. We have done so in conjunction with the World Pediatric Project. A lot of St. Lucian's ch Saint Lucian children come there and listen, get free treatment. F-R-E-E. -E. And when I say free, don't pay one cent because the high class professionals who come out of the United States, they come 12, 14 times a year. They have a prominent presence in St. Vincent. We have built a separate theater for them. We have equipped it together. And they don't charge anything for their services. And when your children from St. Lucia come to St. Vincent for operations, be they heart operations, scoliosis of the spine, orthopedic problems, they have bent knees and all sorts of things, cleft lips, they, 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 all of these things from across the region, the, the sub-region, they come. And we do not charge one single cent because we have taken the position that whatever little we have, we share it with our brothers and sisters. You know, it's, it's an unsung, an untold story, and I'd like you to come and, and look at that particular project. And by the way, if we have the, the for persons who 
if, for instance, you, you have a complicated heart operation and you need a, to have better supervision on an ongoing basis, we fly you free under this project of cost to Virginia Commonwealth University or the companion hospital, teaching hospital in St. Louis, Missouri or in Philadelphia. We work with the United States Embassy so that the visas can be issued for the children and parents for the period. It's and and then the 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 recurrent expenditure I, I suspect in 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 um in St. Lucia would be in the region on health would be in the region of ten percent, maybe eleven percent. The same thing in St. Vincent, Grenada and so on. These are high percentage numbers, but our people are demanding rightly more and more and better health care service. And we are seeking to deliver, but it is not cheap. And I'm very glad that the question has been asked so that we can take note of many good things which we have. The, the, the real problems we are having now in health are lifestyle diseases, hypertension, diabetes, you know, cardiac arrest connected to the lifestyle disease, diseases. Um, you know, um, the answer. So that, and we're living longer. So there we are. I mean, the, 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 your question I've given just a, a synopsis. I can, I can talk for hours on this question because, and I'm sure Alan can and, 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 and Timothy, because contrary to what a number of people may think, is a subject on which governments, certainly in the OECS in my experience, that, that, that we, we, we always thinking and acting on. And a lot has been done, but we have much more still to do. Let me just add a wee bit in that, since St. Kitts and Nevis holds the, the lead with respect to health matters in the quasi caricom um, cabinet. And to support the chair to the extent that we have a problem, largely now with respect to lifestyle issues and our response to NCDs, non-communicable diseases. It was interesting because before the CARICOM intervened to make the matter of NCDs one which require urgent global attention, not enough focus was being put upon this. This area having a high-level meeting at the UN in September devoted to the issue of NCDs, and indeed it is, in my view, somewhat of a tribute to the lead role which the CARICOM leaders had played, including, of course, the then um, head of, of PAHO, um, who had given excellent leadership to this cause. And so in September, that matter it's down on the agenda. While we have to find appropriate responses, and still the message is prevention is better than cure. And so we want to address these at the level of our primary engagement in the health sector, our health clinics, health centers, etc., throughout the islands, particularly in the rural and urban centers, have to again develop very strong public education programs that help people to become more health conscious. Issues to do with exercise and diet and stress reduction are critical. But as we deal with this, and, 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 and that aspect of it largely has brought perhaps some of the most 
and significant mortality rates within the region. But equally, we have the communicable diseases. And equally, we still have a challenge of dealing with the infections with respect to HIV within the region. Last week in St. Kitts, we had PANCAP, we had um, several, CAFR and so on, having a series of meetings. And one of the statistics that came out that within the OECS, the matter of HIV um, infection rates uh, was a mixed bag among member states, but within the critical cohort of 15 to 29, they were now seeing a spike in relation to that. And so that is a worrying phenomenon. Um, and we also are seeing in some countries the infection rate get higher, those who are in the 50s and so on. So it would appear that post-menopause, the people get a bit more um, less conscious of the risk factors associated with their lifestyle. So we are going to have to look at that because the 15 to 29 is our most critical um, age in terms of productive activity in communities, etc. And so we want to, to put that on the agenda. We also have to look at how we are going to finance healthcare, because healthcare is a significant portion of our budgets. And healthcare has had the support, particularly the, 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 the fight to have diminished incidence of HIV from a number of entities, um, the Global Foundation, PEPFAR, and so on. And we have been advised that in relation to the PEPFAR support, which according to our regional health professionals have been one of the most significant contributions, we were advised that the PEPFAR will transition out of all countries by 2020 except for the Jamaica. And so within the OECS, we are going to face another mechanism of graduation. And the question will be, how do we continue to achieve success? How do we continue our programs now that they will have to be carried on the state budget as opposed to being, as it were, being the beneficiary of subvention? We still have not yet achieved the 90-90-90 commitments that we have made with respect to HIV in particular. And so the triple 90, if you will, was that 90% of the people in our respective countries should have been tested so that we could determine whether there was a presence of HIV. 90% of them we aspire to have treatment and antiretroviral treatments to be provided to them. And we are expected that 90% of those who are being treated would show viral load suppression. So 90, 90, 90. 90% 90 of our people tested, 90% of them are on treatment, and 90% are responding positively because in future tests, you're going to see a suppression of the viral loads within them. Um, that is going to be critical, and that, I think, is still um, a standard which we are far behind. But we have had some good news. In that last December, we noted that a number of countries within the OECS, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, I'm not sure which other country from the windward, had joined Cuba as being the only countries in the world that had been certified over a consistent period of testing to have eliminated mother-to-trial transmission of HIV. So that is a commendable uh, achievement. It's really how do you maintain that high standards so there is no worsening of our situation and at the same time, health comes with a tremendous cost. We have to do all that we can to avoid getting ill. 
by living healthy and healthful lives. So again, this is a significant matter. All of us are grappling with challenges. Our people, when they become sick, many of them become challenged to the state that must show compassion. And I believe in part that has res been responsible for all of us now talking about national health um, insurance scheme so that we could find at least one response mechanism that doesn't bankrupt the state in curing um, for those who become ill uh, and, and are unable to, to care for themselves. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we have had UWE consulting and provide support to us, um, their own economic department, I think it is, um, and this significant matter, and we are hoping that sometime in September we will get advice as to how we may proceed in a more deliberate manner to bring the National Health Insurance Scheme into being in, in St. Kitts and Nevis. Any other question? Well, if we had one, you see, I would have won my bet about the woman being the first one to ask the question. No, no, no. I, I didn't ask you whether the question only, or, or if you are, if you had said to me, which of the prime ministers would an, best anticipate what the people of Saint Lucia would ask? I would said Alan. But that's not the question. That's not that the issue I had raised. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for coming by, and I, 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 I hope we have helped to provide a little more information. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, the various countries, will get more information from their governments as we go along. All the best. Thank you very much.